I had someone very close to me <clears throat> who passed away it's probably about 12 years ago. Um, and she was HIV positive, which she uh, contracted HIV through the use of, uh, you know, uh, using needles. And she was so ashamed that even though her HIV had not gone to full-blown AIDS, she could have lived, but she refused all medical treatment. We didn't know at all. And I remember sitting, you know, in a nursing home um, with her, and it was crazy. It happened like a month. It just went from like here to there. And she was so ashamed that she didn't say anything. And she didn't want her kids to know. She didn't want family to know. And ultimately she died because she didn't want to seek treatment, not because of the actual disease. So when I got with Tapestry and I started uh, seeing all the things available to people, but it's sad because people won't utilize that stuff if they go into those settings and they're not being treated like humans. Judge, it's the point where I don't even tell them, like to tell my primary care that I'm using because I feel they judge me and that I won't get the appropriate help that I need help for. Mm -hmm. Same with my psych psychiatrist, my med provider. It's like I want to be totally honest, but yet I can't be totally honest because I won't get the help I need to get help. And I, I'll get judged for it and then I have to suffer the consequences. How has your perspective or your awareness of stigma, have, has your perspective shifted? Oh, I know mine has. So I have learned a lot, um, and this has been a, a very eye-opening experience for me to be with Tapestry. Um, I faced a lot of judgment from my my peers and uh, even family members questioning, you know, what I was doing and why I thought um, this was important um, work. and. You know, really, you know, people even asking me, don't, don't you feel like you're contributing to poor choices and deteriorate health of a community by, by doing, you know, participating in these services? And there's a lot of resistance among healthcare providers to engage with clients who use drugs or who come into the hospital, you know, intoxicated or high. I think there's a, oftentimes a sense that there are more important patients to take care of. You know, to me, that signifies a, a, a tremendous gap. We have historically um, been very stigmatizing and, and condescending, and and still in pockets that that can be the case. Even before they come to me in the emergency department, they may have experienced different slights and stigma and bias. So that e even though I'm approaching them for the first time, already their guard is up. To me, as a healthcare provider, it makes me super aware of the gap that exists within our healthcare system on the part of our providers. And it, it pains me to, to say it, but we do, we do carry a stigma. Nurses, doctors, we're all human beings. Um, we have prejudged notions, we have preconceived ideas, you know, we, we have them. But when we allow them to take precedence in our relationships with our patients, um, we do them a disservice. You know, up until five or six years ago, we really didn't consider it was our role to treat um, opioid use disorder and other addiction in the emergency department. We felt like um, many people felt it was someone's personal choice and our job was to make sure that you survived the overdose or you got treated for the abscess and, and that was about it. And I think it gets to the larger role of, of the shift of I am just treating the problem you come in with to recognizing that the problem you come in with is in part formed by the larger issues in your life. And if I don't address those, if I don't address your substance use, if I don't address your homelessness, if I don't address these other issues, then I'm never going to truly kind of treat the reason that you're here. And so as healthcare providers, we have to re-earn that trust. That's what stigma does. It, it sets up a barrier. Um, and it doesn't allow for us to be able to interact in a meaningful way. It doesn't allow us for, for us to, to fully um, empathize with our patients and try to understand their point of reference and where they're coming from. 
Um, and I see that in healthcare, and it needs to change. It's crazy to like sit back and listen to the way people speak about addiction and it pisses me off so bad and even like down to like um you know yeah people and they're like dirty needles and it's like they are not dirty they are used like it's just language is so important language is super important so something just as simple as that the the terminology that we use for uh people who, who use drugs or people who choose to use substances is um, definitely a, a consideration that, you know, we need to make. Much like, <clears throat> rather than saying committed suicide, we are now trying to say died by suicide um, because it has a, it's, it's, it's a much less negative connotation uh, for a very, very sad situation. You know, we have terms for people who use drugs like addict or junkie or, you know, so many uh, terms that have a, a negative connotation to them that it, you know, it, it only enhances the stigma. By using non-stigmatizing language and, and building up trust again in the healthcare system, um, we can make it so that people feel comfortable coming to us. I always like to think about it like, in order to normalize it and humanize it, we always want to humanize the person, right? Mm -hmm. So I always put a person before any behavior. So you're a person that uses drugs, like you said before, a person that died by suicide, a person that does sex work. Mm -hmm. So it's the person <laughs> before the behavior, and that's how we humanize folks. Yeah. Because we emphasize their humanity.